we got a good show to start the new year here, don't we? Stupendous. <laughs> uh, from Van Halen, David Lee Roth is here. <laughs> And, of course, whenever you have anybody on from Van Halen, you have to have sex therapist Dr. Ruth Westheimer. Uh, all right, here we go. Are you ready? My first guest uh, of the new year is the lead singer of Van Halen. Please welcome David Lee Roth. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing great, Dave. Happy New Year's to you. Thanks, same to you. All right. Do you have a nice New Year's? The best yet. We come from uh, Los Angeles to New York City here. We did the uh, we did the countdown for MTV. We did the world premiere of the video there, as a matter of fact. Yeah. And that was an auspicious, auspicious occasion. <laughs> now, you know, cable, uh, <laughs> cable, cable television is dead, though. This year, it's it. Well, you know, <laughs> I, I think what happens is that, you know, when you get something like MTV, it's like regular television, you know, you, you get it and at first it's novel and it's brand mm -hmm. new and then you watch every channel, every show, right. and then you become a little more selective and more selective until ultimately you wind up with a radio. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> now, uh, well, tell me about the, the video we just saw there a little bit of. Now, what is the, does this have a, uh, any kind of a, uh, a, a background, a concept? A, a concept. <laughs> what is the concept? <laughs> Well, you know, we we keep trying, you know, in, in uh, Van Halen, we kept trying to have uh, a concept, you know, with the brothers Edward and Alex, and um, Alex kept forgetting the concept, you know, <laughs> so it was kind of, <laughs> it was, it was sort of up to me, you know, uh -huh. to come, like, come out yeah, with it. That's but, a good thing to have somebody to periodically remind you of the concept. Yeah, but the big thing with this is that we decided that we were going to be major movie moguls and direct our own video, which is kind of an unusual thing. Uh, I, I've always maintained that that was not too difficult. And when you watch these videos mm -hmm. on television, what you're getting generally is the work of a producer or a director who is like a hired gun, you know, like the like the little Mexican village hired Yul Brenner to come in and save the day yeah. for him. Well, usually they're hiring the beer cane guy, you know, who did the commercials yeah. or whatever. And I said, I've always said, well, I don't see why this would be so difficult. And to prove it, next time that you watch uh, MTV or one of the videos on television or something, all you have to do is turn off the sound, and you can put on some Wagner or some Black Sabbath, and it makes perfect sense. <laughs> <laughs> but you know that's a, that's a good point because when, no, uh, it's, <laughs> but if if uh, it's good work if you can get it. Now man, when they you know? when they give out the awards for these things. Uh, it'd be nice if the band actually directed them. That would be an extra touch there. That would be great. Yeah, it's, uh, although judging from some of my peer group, I'm not sure I would hand them the responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, now, like, like, yeah. like who? Who are you talking about? When you say some of your peer group, who do we mean here? Well, you know, you can't expect somebody who spends 10 years of their life on a postage stamp stage in a bar somewhere, you know, all of a sudden be a major movie mogul. I just lucked out. Postage stamp stage in a bar somewhere. Now, this is obviously <laughs> a reference to somebody <laughs> who, who's successful in contemporary music today? Now, who is it? Well, that that is your that's your classic background for the musician. Yeah, but there, there's know. somebody that you don't like here. And we... <laughs> <laughs> now you know why he's behind the desk. No, no, just give us just give us the name. This will be great. Give us the name, and people will uh, respond, and we'll do a commercial. And we'll come back and talk more about. And I, I can't name names. I named names on the last show, and I was lucky to get on this one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Now wait a minute. What was what was the last show you're talking about? <laughs> um, so you're not going to tell us? No, we'll have to go into something. How about else, New Year's though. resolutions? We'll take a shift here and things. You make any? People oh, don't make those anymore, absolutely. do they? Absolutely. And uh, you know, I, I said it once before. I think it's better to generalize in terms of the year to come. You can't. You know, you make a resolution, and I and my resolution would be this year is that dog eat dog world that it is. I think now's a good time on New Year's to decide whether you're going to be a hot dog or a little weenie.
<laughs> I have, well, I have chosen. beautiful. I have chosen to remain a little wiener for one more season. You're going to be a weenie for another oh, year. Yeah, you bet. All right. Uh, <laughs> we, uh, we're going to do a commercial. We'll be back uh, more with David Lee. <laughs> Paul, David Lee Roth is here. Now uh, you're doing you're doing solo work. Is the is the does this mean that the band will soon be uh, breaking up? No, no. Now that happens, you know. <laughs> that does happen. That's that's the Spinal Tap story. No, I still have very <laughs> I still have very strong tribal instincts, and we'll be going into uh, the studio like the middle of this month and start arguing again, and we'll <laughs> we'll come back out with an album sometime this year, hopefully. I have. Um... <laughs> I have here a book called Everything You Want to Know About Van Halen by Gordon Matthews. <laughs> Do you know Gordon Matthews? No, I don't. I've not. <laughs> <laughs> well, but then he, at least it's authentic. Is, we are indicting him, though. Oh, really? <laughs> There's some heat here? No, not at all. Well, here's, we, we have a couple of passages underlined, and I just want you to respond to a couple of these. Uh, during the concert, Van Halen roadies scour the audience for the cutest girls they can find. <laughs> <laughs> According to legend, every roadie gets five backstage passes to hand out. Well, we do that every night here, don't we, Paul? Uh, many a girl has been known to leave her boyfriend behind for a chance to party with the boys. Oh, my God. Uh, David Lee Roth claims to be actively searching out girls from the stage. That's you. When he spots a girl in the audience he thinks is cute, he dances over to the side of the stage while Eddie takes a guitar solo. Oh, this is pitiful. <laughs> No, I can now, explain wait a minute. Let this. Let me just finish can, this can, one little thing here, and then you can say whatever you want to say. This ain't night court. Let me take it. <laughs> well, let me just finish. Well, there's one little line here, uh, David. Um, I feel like this is Judge Wapner. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie takes a guitar solo. There he will shout something to an available roadie like red right, red t-shirt, out of sight, six feet back. While David dances back to the microphone, a roadie in the front row will receive a radio communique <laughs> from the stage. Then he will go to work to find the girl and give her a pass. <laughs> now, is, is there a hint of truth anywhere in this? Well, it all started... <laughs> with... <laughs> it all started when you start building your own stages and you're taking your own production on the road. And they said, Dave, we have to build our own custom barricade out there, you know? And I said, well, and this was a few years ago, I said, well, let's then, let's customize it so we can, so we can uh, do exactly what you just read. <laughs> we, uh, oh, oh my <laughs> and God. we painted numbers on the, on the inside. And, uh, you know, people keep reminding me of this kind of crazy image. People keep invoking this, this wild-eyed, slack-jawed image and everything. And I tell you, I've been seeing the same girl now for maybe two, maybe three weeks, man. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, you know, to, to have it down to radio communique and a grid work and codes. Well, this is the 80s, Dave, you mm -hmm. know, and I was trying to, I, I think, and I, I'm sure Paul and the guys will, will testify. Yeah, they're the, they're, you're laughing the loudest, ain't you, man? Yeah, and there goes the lights on him. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. You, know, you, you want to interact with the audience as closely as possible. Music, music is a sharing experience, mm -hmm. and, um, we, I feel that we can use technology to bring uh, bring ourselves closer to each yeah, other, yeah. And, uh, even in private. Mm -hmm. uh, now, now, tell me about which the... brings us back to video. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, tell me about the uh, the club. You you have a club that's uh, not actually what you would think it would be, but well, that's uh, that's an um, that's an enterprise that we started out in Los Angeles. It's, it's, it's very difficult to have an after-hours place there. You know, everything kind of, they roll up the streets at 2 o'clock in the morning. And we had to have a reason for keeping a place open after 2. Mm -hmm. And um, originally what we would do is, uh, I remember one fella came in. His name was Tomato. Tomato came in to do an exhibit. <laughs> it's an art gallery is what we called it. Tomato and, came uh, in. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and we had it members only. 
from 2 o'clock on, on Friday yeah. and Saturday. And uh, we had to have some art on the Members walls. Members only to keep out the goofy people. Exactly. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, Tomato came in to do an exhibit, and he looked at the walls, and about six days later, he came back with all of his art and did the place up, and everything fit just perfectly. Yeah. Man, you know, around the door jams, and you know, on the cusp of the windows, and up into the corners of the ceiling. At each, It was a custom-made framing and right. everything. And it turns out what he did is he just made it all up on the spot. He mm -hmm. came in and measured the gallery, yeah. you know, and then made it kind of to order and everything. And that's the kind of art that we had in there. Ultimately, we just kept the same exhibit going and going and going, and just covered it with plastic on Friday and Saturday. Now, this is, this is not what I was talking about. <laughs> it's, it's a great story, but it's not what I was talking about. What are you talking well, about? This one right there, the, about the, the jungle. Oh, that's something else entirely. Yeah, well, that's what I said. <laughs> Well, I'm afraid that you're, you're going to... You're talking about the jungle studs. Yeah, the jungle studs. <laughs> <laughs> but, but we don't have time to go into the jungle studs now, so we'll, uh, we'll have to have you come back another time. Oh, well. <laughs> now, uh, is, is the, uh, the solo uh, effort out yet? Yeah, it came out midnight at New Year's Eve, which is kind of my personal holiday. And uh, we'll see what happens for 1985. Well, good. And, and uh, so you're going to be a weenie one more <laughs> year. All right. David Lee Roth, folks. We'll be right back.